The film begins with a girl named Tree, who wakes up in the room of an unknown boy in a boy's hostel. Just then, her phone rings, revealing that it's her birthday today. Tree's dad was trying to call her, but she ignores his call. The room actually belongs to a guy named Carter, whom Tree doesn't even know. She leaves the room and asks Carter for a headache pill. She felt like maybe he took advantage of her when she was heavily intoxicated the previous night. Then, as she steps outside, a guy starts hitting on Tree, teasing her. That's when Tree encounters another guy who had a crush on her, but Tree didn't find him interesting at all. After that, Tree returns to her girl's hostel, where her group leader asks her where she was last night. However, Tree doesn't disclose anything. Later, her roommate named Lori had made a cupcake for Tree's birthday, but Tree throws it away in the trash without eating it because she wasn't a nice person. She doesn't care about others' feelings or value anyone else's company. Afterward, they all head to the college where their meeting is taking place. When a girl approaches them with a chocolate shake, their group leader scolds her because in their eyes, this food was not good for health. When that girl gets up to leave the table, she accidentally bumps into Carter, who was also a student at their college. Carter had come there to return Tree's bracelet, which was left in his room the previous night. However, Tree sternly tells Carter to leave without anyone knowing that she stayed in his room last night. Afterward, she goes to her college's hospital campus, where she was supposed to meet her professor, who she was having an affair with. Just then, the professor's wife also arrives, and in front of her, they pretend to be normal. After that, Tree leaves from there. At that moment, Tree's roommate Lori is also present. She warns Tree not to get caught up in the doctor's affair, but Tree doesn't seem to care about her words. When Tree returns to her hostel room, her group leader tells her that they have to attend a party in the evening. Afterward, Tree gets ready and heads to the party through the hostel's path. It's during this time that she notices continuous calls from her dad, which he chooses not to answer. As she walks a little further, she comes across a toy on the road with birthday music playing inside it. When Tree approaches to inspect it, she sees a man wearing a baby mask who has been staring at her for quite some time. When Tree threatens to call the police, he leaves. However, suddenly, he attacks her from behind, stabbing her in the stomach with a knife, causing her to die on the spot. And then, Tree wakes up suddenly in the boys' hostel where we first saw her. This room belonged to Carter, and now she's receiving calls from her dad again. Tree is now thoroughly confused. It feels like she might have had a bad dream, but this time, she knows about Carter and also where he keeps the headache pills. When Tree steps outside, she encounters the same guy hitting on her again, and then she meets the guy who had a crush on her, just like before. Everything was happening exactly as it did the first time. Tree felt like she might have seen all of this before, but she couldn't remember it clearly. When Tree returns to her hostel room, Lori, as before, brings her a cupcake, but this time Tree leaves for college without eating it. There, she notices the baby mask that she saw on the killer's face the previous night, but she can't figure out what's really happening. Carter comes to return her bracelet again, and this time, Tree takes her bracelet from him directly. She then goes to see her doctor to tell him about her strange condition, but the doctor doesn't listen to her properly. In the evening, when Tree gets ready to leave for the party again, she sees the same toy on the road with happy birthday music playing. This time, she stops and thinks. She decides not to go to the toy and changes her road. After that, she arrives at the place where the party is being held. As soon as she opens the door, she sees the same killer in the baby mask again. Tree punches him, but then the lights come on. In reality, it turns out that Tree's friends had organized a surprise birthday party for her. Her friend, the one wearing the mask, seemed overly interested in Tree but Tree's group leader had started liking that guy too. Tree also found that guy appealing. She makes an excuse and goes to his room, where he first appears in the mask in front of her. Then he turns on loud music and starts dancing strangely. Suddenly, the real killer shows up. He first attacks that guy and then goes after Tree. He takes a shard of glass and strikes Tree with it, causing her to die. After this, she wakes up again in Carter's room. Now, Tree was quite distressed. It was her birthday today. Here, we come to know that Tree was trapped in a time loop. Whenever she gets killed, time resets itself, and that's why all of this was happening repeatedly. She was going to die on her birthday. When Tree steps outside, the same events start unfolding as they did before. She quickly returns to her hostel room and tells her roommate Lori, but Lori finds it hard to believe her. To make Lori believe her, Tree says, I know you made a cupcake for me, and I also know there's a surprise party tonight. Lori starts to think that Tree might be unwell. She advises Tree to stay at home and rest tonight. So, Tree does just that. She closes all the windows and doors, and as she's about to eat Lori's cupcake, she feels a presence nearby. 
When Tree approaches the door with a weapon this time, the killer attacks her from behind and stabs her. Tree wakes up for the fourth time in Carter's room. This time, she was very scared and her body was in pain. She goes outside and starts looking around, feeling disoriented. That's when Carter comes to her with her belongings. She clings to Carter, crying, and asks for his help. She tells him everything. Upon hearing her story, Carter tells her that she is trapped in a time loop and she won't get out of it until she figures out who her real killer is. He suggests they make a list of all her enemies and find out who wants to kill her. Carter also tells Tree that when she came to his room in a drunken state, he went to sleep in his friend's room. He insists that he didn't do anything wrong. At this point, Tree realizes that Carter is a good guy. Carter informs Tree that she has plenty of chances to catch her killer thanks to the time loop granting her unlimited lives. Tree starts making a list of potential suspects who could have been her killer. She starts with the guy who killed her at the party. Then she keeps an eye on the guy who had a crush on her, but she realizes he was with an officer at the time of her death. However, the killer strikes again from behind, resetting the loop once more. In the next iteration, Tree focuses on the doctor's wife, behaving like a commando, but again, the killer manages to get to her. Next, Tree targets her group leader, suspecting that she might be the killer. They end up in a fight on the road, and suddenly, a truck runs them over. This way, Tree gradually learns about each person and eliminates them as suspects one by one. However, Tree still hadn't discovered the identity of her killer. The next morning, when Tree wakes up again and leaves her hostel, she decides not to wear any clothes, which surprises everyone. Tree knew that she would die in the evening, and everyone would forget everything. And, as expected, the killer attacks her again in the evening, after which the time loop resets once more. When she wakes up in Carter's room again, Tree is now very weak. She can barely move. Carter takes her to the hospital, where the doctor, after examining an x-ray, tells Tree that with the injuries she sustained so far, she should have died by now. Tree realizes that no matter how many times time resets, she becomes weaker each time, and eventually she might die due to her injuries. She starts to suspect the doctor as well. That's why she escapes from the hospital, but the killer shows up there and kills the doctor in front of her eyes, then starts chasing Tree. She manages to grab a car in the parking area and drives away, feeling relieved. She decides to play a risky move and intentionally gets stopped by a police officer. Tree believes that jail might be a safer place than anywhere else at this point, so she tells the policeman that she's heavily intoxicated and asks him to arrest her. As the policeman is about to put her in his car, another vehicle suddenly crashes into the officer, crushing him. It turns out that the killer was driving that car. The killer then tosses a burning candle onto the road because there was spilled gasoline, causing a fiery explosion. The car tree was in explodes, leading to her death. The time loop resets once again, and Tree finds herself back in Carter's room. This time, she is determined and doesn't care anymore. She tells Carter that he will be soaking wet, and the guy will faint, after which they both go to a cafe. There, Tree shares with Carter that her mom's birthday coincides with hers, but her mom passed away three years ago, making this day unpleasant for her. During their conversation, Tree's dad calls her, and on the TV, they see news about a serial killer who had murdered many innocent people. The killer was undergoing treatment at the same hospital campus. Tree suspects that this might be the killer. She goes to the hospital where he had disappeared from his room and killed a security guard. Then he attacks Tree from behind, but she manages to dodge his bullets and escape. This time, the killer removes his mask, revealing his identity to Tree. She now knows who the killer is. When the killer attacks her, Carter comes to her rescue, but the killer brutally kills Carter by breaking his neck. Tree manages to escape to a locked room and then attacks the killer from behind. However, at this point, Tree realizes that if she doesn't die today, the time loop won't reset and she will lose Carter forever. So, she makes a life-altering decision and jumps off a tower, sacrificing herself. As a result, time resets again. She returns to Carter's room and is relieved to find him alive. However, her happiness is bittersweet, knowing the sacrifices she had to make. She goes back to her hostel and apologizes to Lori for not treating her well. She ends her affair with the doctor and has dinner with her dad, apologizing for ignoring him for so long. In the evening, she is prepared to confront her killer. She goes to the hospital and finds the security guard with a gun, telling him to call the police at the right time. Then, she enters the killer's room, planning to shoot him directly. However, the safety on the gun is still engaged, so it doesn't fire. The man catches Tree and brutally beats her, and the lights go out. Afterward, Tree manages to shoot the killer from behind, killing him. They celebrate her birthday with Carter that night, and Tree eats Lori's homemade cupcake before going to sleep. But to her surprise, the time loop resets once again. She wakes up in Carter's room once more. Tree had found her real killer and should have broken free from the time loop, but she was still trapped. 
This meant that she hadn't actually found her real killer yet. So, in a hurry, she starts packing her bags in her hostel room and tells Lori that she's leaving the town. Lori brings the cupcake again, but this time Tree realizes that she had eaten it the previous night, and she understands that she died in her sleep. The cupcake had been poisoned, and the real killer was not someone else but Lori, the girl who had been living with her all this time. Tree figures out that Lori had been behind the mask, and she was also the nurse whom Tree had mistakenly killed thinking she was her killer. So, Lori had put on the mask and clothes to make Tree believe that the killer was the man she had thought all along. When Tree tells Lori to prove it by eating the cupcake she made, Lori refuses, and Tree is surprised at how Tree had figured it out. As Tree is about to leave, Lori grabs her by the hair, revealing her true face. She had wanted to kill Tree because she had feelings for the doctor who had been pursuing Tree. That's why she wanted to eliminate Tree. A fight ensues between them, and Tree forces Lori to eat her own poisoned cupcake, finally killing her. After this, we see Tree and Carter, where Carter invites her to stay with him. The next day begins, and Tree has finally broken free from her death loop. She appears happy, especially with Carter by her side. With that, this video comes to an end. Please let us know how you like this story by commenting, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.